And we're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa type for off the press. Openabong Kataria joins us this morning via phone. Openabong, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning, Openabong Kataria. Nice to have you this morning. Uh, trust you're good. All right. I said, ho hope you're good. Nice to have you. Ah, we found you there. All right. Is anybody, is anybody actually good in Nigeria? <laughs> That's why I'm asking. No, no, no. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Uh, I, I think it's okay. Well, well, let's take a look at the papers this morning. I'd like to start off with the punch. The punch says, Buhari under pressure to end fuel. Nara disaster. Uh, that's how the punch reports it this morning. Governors in talks with presidency Emefili as reps small emergency session. And people are saying, <laughs> how far can this yield any result? President must intervene. Crisis affecting turnout at uh, rallies. Senators and reps are quoted to say. Interim government illegal. Parties won federal government. And you find telecom subscribers sue government over tax. INEX silent as PVC collection ends. Uh, ended yesterday. Overcrowded Abuja schools where people learn on bare floor. Uh, you could see a, a picture. That's a picture of it. I mean, if we're looking at the punch for today, uh, that's exactly what you'll be seeing this morning. So you also find another one. FBI police haunt killers of Nigeria pastor's wife. That's so much you can take on the punch newspaper. All right, very strict to the Guardian. Fuel Naira scarcity depletes uh, productivity, worsens inflation. Fuel Naira scarcity depletes productivity, worsens inflation. A lot of riders to that kick us, riders to that won't go into details. Uh, 20 million Naira to treat cancer case, 1 million Naira for radiotherapy. Want to find out more uh, on that? Read the details in page six of the Guardian. APC divided. Ignore Aerofice outburst at your peril. ex aspirants warn party leadership are some of the headlines on the front page. Oh, and this uh, important ones at the bottom as well. Atikutas CBN or narrow availability warns against bullion van tendencies. The IPOB alleges plan to attack Atiku in Southeast. Uh, some of the headlines on the front page of the, the Guardian. Well, we'll move away from the Guardian newspaper. We take a quick look at the leadership. Leadership says 2023 polls academic session may shut out 3 million students. We have no arrangement for campus voting. INEC is saying we are determined to vote holiday or no holiday. Uh, that's what students are quoted to say. As you look at the leadership, don't disenfranchise them. Uh, CSO warns low turnout as PVC collection closes. And just before we move away from the leadership, you find banks deny holding cash, says 100 billion naira invested in IT infrastructure. And uh, PDP accuses Tunubu APC of mopping up cash for vote buying. And still looking at the leadership now, Middle Belt Forum demands probe of Nasser war killings. And WC, government officials working against Tunubu APC stakeholders and uh, President Mohamed Buhari, Atiku condemns massacre of Katsina vigilantes. These are some of the headlines you find this morning on the leadership newspaper. Let's move over from the leadership quickly to uh, the daily independent interesting to have the paper on our table this morning don't adjust 2023 election timetable buhari tells einek right and uh someone asked about the independence of such uh, bodies like the cbn and einek uh with the president's directives uh again new poll sees peter b uh, as popular choice for president nara redesign pdp accuses tinubu apc of mopping up cash for vote buying. I think that's uh, similar to the headline in the leadership. Serap drags Lawan Bajabiamila to court over 228.1 billion NAS budget. MBF blasts Governor Sule Sanusi over killing of 37 herdsmen in Nasarwa. 
Uh, PSC appoints the three DIGs, suspends promotion of eight CPs, 11 DCPs. I think the current head of the Police Service Commission, I don't know if he's been uh, 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 approved by the National Assembly, is the uh, uh, former uh, IG of police, Arasi. Army Barracks converted to collision center in 2019 poll. Wiki. There's a plot to rig 2023 presidential election. Uh, that's elder statesman Tanko Yakasai with that uh, alarm. Uh, some headlines on the front page of uh, Daily Independent. And at this point, we'll bring in uh, Opuna Boy and Kutai Opuna. Well, thank you very much uh, for your time. I know that there's a temptation to start with economic stories, but let's look at uh, the 2023 elections. Uh, with, uh, thank you, Bobby. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. With the, with the Daily Independent uh, saying that the president has told INEC not to adjust the uh, timetable, um, this is what uh, the paper says that President Muhammad Buhari um, has instructed the uh, Independent National Electoral Commission to ensure that the timetable for the conduct of the 2023 election is strictly adhered to as no adjustment in the time, in the dates rather, will be entertained. Uh, that is what he's saying. Uh, the paper says there were reports last week that the electoral body may shift the polls by a minimum of two weeks due to logistics issues. If talked about even feel scarcity affecting them. Um, uh, is, is the president allowed to make such statements? Mr. Gutara, is the president well, allowed to make such statements or the issue such uh, directives to INEC? You may, you may want to inform the president that the president? No, I'm, I'm saying um, with, with, with the independent nature of the electoral commission is the president to make such statements telling them that uh, uh, an extension of the date will not be entertained and all that well i think uh, the, the, the president is extending his brief to so good because uh, if you look at the laws certain of imf it's an independent body that has the discretion to fix this election and to also decide on how the election can be conducted. But you know, like what happened in 20, is it 2015, when Good Luck Jonathan or uh, INEC extended the time by two weeks due to the insecurity in the Northeast, there was this allegation that the hope it was all orchestrated to reach the election in favor of Good Lord Jonathan. And as the president of the country, the boss stops at your table. And so what President Buare, I believe, is trying to do is let Nigerians know that he is not a party to any amendment or adjustment in the in the in the dates. So he's just want to reinforce or, uh, or give the Nigerians that hope and belief that he sincerely wants to bequeath to Nigerians the most credible and transparent election as he has always promised. But I will say this, it is not just making such promises additional such others or advice. The circumstances the compare INEC to show you. You will know INEC that it has about a um, hundred thousand vehicles that will be deployed in the forthcoming general elections. If you don't have the tool, how are you going to use those vehicles? How will the vehicles move? And so it is not just enough to ask INEC not to extend the uh, date, but to also ensure that INEC has, and Nigerians as well, because Nigerians will also go out to vote. But you have an enabling environment, you have to create that enabling environment for INEC to discharge its responsibilities and also for Nigerians to go out and vote. Most Nigerians will have to leave where they are staying right now, will have to travel from where they are domiciled now 
So probably the villages, the countryside, and so on. If they don't have petrol, how would they would? In fact, even if the petrol is available and the prices are exorbitant, it's going to discourage a lot of people from traveling. So it's not enough to tell how you not to attend the day. You have to create an environment that will enable Highland to discharge its responsibilities and also enable Nigerians to cast their votes. Uh Openabon Kataria, let's quickly move away from that and look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Now, boldly under leadership, uh, 3 million youths in Nigeria University are at risk of being disenfranchised in the forthcoming general elections. And uh, the umpire is saying they can't make special arrangements for these students to vote in constituencies where they're not registered. So my question to you is, do you think that anything can be done uh, within the ambience of the law or uh, outside of the law to include this number of persons to be part of the uh, elections, not also forgetting the reason why this is actually happening. There is so much discussion. I back just too much. Oh, open the bank, Katara, can you hear me? Open a bank, Ataria. Yes. My question is, what are your thoughts about uh, 3 million Nigerians, about 3 million plus Nigerians that might be disenfranchised? Uh, and the umpire is saying, there's no special arrangement to have these persons vote where they were not registered. I mean, voting outside of their constituency. Or do you think that anything can be done to ensure that we don't have three million persons disenfranchised? First, it will be extremely wrong to disenfranchise three million students. I believe that is the cause of your question. Yes, please. So that I go ahead. Yes. Okay. It will be extremely wrong because if you look at the books in 2015, between Atiku Abubakar, uh, sorry, between President Goodluck Jonathan and um, former President, um, so what can I say? Between President Buhari uh, and former President Goodluck Jonathan, you will find out that the, the margin is not even up to 3 million. And so it will not be possible to disenfranchise 3 million Nigerians. What I think the federal government should do is to give a break. Let the students go back to where they have registered to cast their votes. Now, a lot of people will like you. What are the financial implications on the parents or even on the students that are even training themselves? These are the sacrifices we have to make because if you don't have, sorry, if you register in your state, for example, River State, and you're in Lagos State, as a student at the University of Lagos, and they say you should cast your vote in Lagos State, how will I like address that? Well, in this moment of technology, it is possible. But if I like and I saw Nigeria, that that is possible using technology and it's not going to amount to reading. No problem. But you have to, you have to test it right now. Of course, there is more voting and more accreditation going on. So it has to be tested right now. We think this week so that you are going Nigeria to have that confidence that that will not be used as an avenue to read. Because it's also easy to manipulate the students who are in school. So it's all about the credibility and integrity of the elections. It's either they go back to the other people, which will have huge financial implications, or I need to come up with the technology that will enable these students, just students alone, and no other person, 
that will enable these students to cast their vote. Now, the question again is, because INEC has to work in collaboration with the institutions all over the country. And you can imagine how arduous that will be. Well, um, Openabon Kataria, I, I don't think that that might be the case because uh, reference has been made to Section 47 of Sorry? the... I'm saying that I don't think that that might be the case for INEC. Of course, they're making reference to Section 47 of the Electoral Act 2022, and uh, that permits every intended voter to be present. That's what the, that part of the uh, you know, Electoral Act quotes. So, uh, but, but on the other hand, some people are saying that is it not possible for, you know, the governing body, I mean, the academic, academics themselves, you know, put, to put school on hold, maybe for a week, the week of the elections, so that maybe students can actually find them, uh, their way back to their different constituencies to cast their votes. That's what I said. I was not talking about the In Nigeria, anything, anything can happen. But like I said, the best thing is they should shut down the institution for at least two weeks. That, that, that is not going to have any negative effect on their learning. The only implication there is the financial, the only problem is the financial implication. Because given the hard economic situation in this country, it's going to have a serious effect on parents. That is just going to be the problem. But it should be extremely wrong for whatever reason to disenfranchise those students. Because one vote could make a difference. And don't forget the voting population. The students, I think, uh, for what they are saying, has about uh, 50 or about percentage, if you look at the percentage. So it's quite huge. Quite huge. I'm talking about the younger generation. So they just have to go back to the real consensus to cast their vote. Those who are interested in effecting a change in this country. All right, Mr. Terry, let's uh, go back to the, the Daily Independent because it's an interesting one now, and I'm, I'm curious for your take on this. Uh, a new poll showing that uh, uh, Labour Party's presidential candidate, Peter B, is a choice for president amongst Nigerians. Um, uh, the paper says that... Uh, uh, the Labour Party is leading in that poll with 37%, followed by uh, PDP 27%, APC 24%, according to this next tier SPD, an African based international uh, development consulting firm. They had a sample size of 3,000 people. Well, what are your thoughts on this? Um, is this credible as far as you're concerned? Is this realistic? So, we, you know, you don't do it well, like I said, serious hard back. Okay, so, so so next year, yeah. yeah, next year, SPD, an African-based international development consulting firm, conducted a poll, a poll to see who Nigerians are choosing to be their next president. And according to them, it is Peter Obi of the Labour Party. Uh, in their poll, with a sample size of three thousand, Obi got thirty-seven percent. The PDP got twenty-seven percent as Atiku, and APC Bola Tilbu got twenty-four percent. Is this um? Realistic, or is this? Uh, do you find this to be the case from your observation? Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, <laughs> first you can't speak the integrity of the poll because uh, the integrity of the poll has to do with the inclination of um, the, the, the persons involved. Do you know if they are interested if they are loyal to Peter B or if they are loyal to Atiku Abubakar? or if they are supporting Tinubu. But the truth about it is that it is my conviction that a lot of these polls, Nigerians will come to realize that they are just conjectures based on snippets of information put together by those behind the poll, and also has to do with their inclination. Nigerians will definitely of course, the election is between P2B between and Atiku Abubakar because of the additional performance of the APC in government. But I tell you, it's going to be a very tight one, no doubt about that. 
But I have a conviction that our people will win for one principal reason. Structure. We've not completely moved away from structure in this country. If you have, like in River State, for example, how many candidates, or how many people are contesting on Labour Party platform? And you need people in the House of Assembly and the National Assembly to continue with the campaign in your absence. Even the Labour Party in River State is not that strong. I don't want to go into the details. You can, I can tell you a lot of people in Labour Party and River State are even not happy with, uh, with the PTOB because of what happened on his last visit to River State. But let me say that, say that on another day. So I can tell you right now that I don't rely on polls. The polls in Nigeria are not as credible as they are in the US and in the UK. It is my belief, however, that the PDP will pick other uh, candidates in the forthcoming presidential elections so, so I, because I... of the structure. Mm. But uh, open a bank, Ataria, you know, I, I probably, and or we probably might just be able to relate with the fact that uh, there's a trust deficit with almost everything that we do, you know, because of the level of corruption that uh, we emit as a people. I mean, when we're talking about corruption now, it's not limited to those who are, you know, calling the shots, the governors and what have you, they are, you know, ruling class. Well, it cuts across the entire society, different strata of society, corrupt practices, corrupt behavior, and what have you. But this is actually not holding brief for the firm or this institution next year. Uh, there were other, also other pointers that, uh, according to that report, that none of the presidential candidates met both criteria for victory in the first round, uh, a majority of votes cast at 25% in two-thirds of the state. And however, there's a possibility this is why you have research. There's a, a possibility of having a rerun elections because it's going to be keenly uh, contested. And you have stated that. So, you know, with all of this, I mean, several factors they have mentioned. You also mentioned, you know, uh, uh, facts that some parties, like the Labour Party, do not have strength in some regions, mentioning these states where they don't have the, the strength. Uh, for instance, the Southwest, I beg your pardon, the Northwest, and the Northeast making reference to this. So with all of this detail, not necessarily saying uh, we understand that the respondent, according to it, is a face-to-face -face poll. Right. So would you still say that uh, it's nothing to go by, that all of this reports and information is nothing to go by? Mercy. My greatest regret is not having this. This is not being on Zoom, honestly. Because there is a lot of discussion. I can actually, I can actually comprehend the whole back is so much. So much. I can actually uh, comprehend. Open up, Katara. We, we, we have to go now. Uh, we sincerely apologize. We're hoping that you are able to join us uh, next time via Zoom. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, then. Open the has uh, been speaking with us this morning on Off the Press. We have to go. Uh, the network has not been smooth and, you know, communication as well has been very strenuous. We'll definitely take a break when we return. We'll return with a first major conversation right here.